Colonic Construction Reality Unfolded An Invitation for Collaboration by the Meta Modelers So what is really going on with Holonic construction? Taking a tetrahedron as representative of three-dimensional static space, then the four-dimensional hypertetrahedron would be an analogue of dynamic four-dimensional space-time, which has fulfilled its Holonic construction. The hypertetrahedron is also known as the four-simplex, the simplest possible four-dimensional analogue of the most fundamental platonic solid, the tetrahedron. It is also known as the five-cell because it is bounded by five tetrahedral cells. While the inner cells may be viewed as the four holons required to achieve monad resolution, the outer fifth tetrahedron may be seen as the monad resolution of one progression and the holon bias of the next series. Little wonder Buckminster Fuller was compelled to observe that the natural analytical geometry of the universe is based on arrays of tetrahedra. The E8 geometry alone contains hundreds of thousands of them. Therefore, the hypertetrahedron is the most likely candidate metageometry to represent all of reality via holonic construction from the basis of a singularity. Watching a three-dimensional projection of a five-cell performing a simple rotation reveals two metatransforms that account for the two most defining aspects of reality as we perceive it. The transform of reflectivity between cells accounts for all of the duality observed about us, while the transform of reflexivity from monad resolution and also back to holon bias accounts for the countless diversity of forms we also perceive. The reflective transform intrinsic to the five cell explains the fractal nature of reality which is full of self-similar forms at multiple levels of abstraction, while the reflexive transform reverting from monad resolution back to holon bias allows new dissimilar forms to emerge at multiple levels of abstraction. We have designated these self-dissimilar forms as bractals, signifying creation of a new form by evolution, as opposed to fractals through adaptation. So why has this source code for reality remained a secret for so long? Is it a simple case that it has been hidden in ubiquity, as it comprises everything? Surely one simple mechanism cannot be fundamental to all of creation. What may be the most intriguing is that if this is hidden in ubiquity, what may be found in obscurity? Born between the 1st and 2nd century AD, a figure known as Maria Prophetisa was given the honorific Plato's daughter, such was her wisdom. Aside from her other achievements, she is attributed to what is known as the Axiom of Maria, one becomes two, two becomes three, and out of the third comes the one as the fourth, the essence of holonic construction. She practised alchemy, as modern chemistry had yet to emerge as a separate, recognised discipline, and yet she invented several key apparatus that are still used in modern labs to this day, such as the tribikos, the kerotatis, and the bain-marie that bears her name. She is also said to have first discovered hydrochloric acid. She was a scientist and a visionary. The axiom of Maria, drawn from antiquity, so elegantly describing the process of holonic construction, is hidden in ubiquity. It is all around us. Surely we would expect to see this process observed in all branches of inquiry. Everyday biological cell division is very easy to see as resembling holons and the process of holonic construction. As expected, nothing too remarkable occurs between the one-cell zygote, the two-cell embryo, and the four-cell embryo. But on the third cleavage event, the eight-cell embryo begins a process of compaction. Compaction is when the round and loosely connected blastomeres assume a flattened, polarised cell morphology. The outer cell surface becomes convex and the inner surface becomes concave. This eight-cell stage results in the marula, 
which looks like a solid ball that correlates to a reversion to holon bias and the evolution of a bractal form, the blastula. Another example of holonic construction occurs in specialist cell adaptations in the eye. The retina is the back part of the eye that contains photoreceptor cells that respond to light. There are two types of these specialised cells, rods and cones. Cones are most sensitive to one of three different colours, green, red and blue. They account for the first three adaptations of holonic construction. However, on their own, they are incomplete to achieve vision. Individually, each of the types of cone cells respond in accordance with their holon bias. Any combination of two of them lead to the perception of secondary colours as lens paradox, while all three achieve the perception of white light as paradigm equilibrium, which resolves any colour bias as predicted by holonic construction. The rods only come in one type. They are most sensitive to light and dark. They provide us a depth of vision, without which we have no sense of grayscale. The rods, then, are the equivalent mechanism to achieve monad resolution. Science doesn't have all the answers that are needed to describe and understand reality. What of the other domains of everyday life? Does culture and society operate and develop by the law of holonic construction? The interdisciplinary study of complex systems has come to prominence in recent years and covers all fields of human endeavour. Central to this discipline is how we interact, how we form and use networks. It won't come as a surprise that different types of network follow the fundamentals of holonic construction. In holonic construction, three types of network emerge time and again. The bilateral centralised network, consisting of a static hub and static nodes. The multilateral distributed network, which has dynamic hubs that can reroute between static nodes. And finally, there is the omnilateral decentralised network of dynamic points that can be nodes or hubs. By applying the template of holonic construction, it is clear that the missing fourth network is the simplest, which is why it is often overlooked. It is the unilateral attributed network. In holonic construction terms, it is akin to a holon bias, having only a single attribute, which is the ability to transmit a one-way signal. It is the do-task most common network. The most evolved network form, decentralised, has become topical in recent years with the advent of blockchain technologies, which rely on its unique capabilities. It has the highest fault tolerance and agency, but this comes at the price of high latency, while at the opposite end of the scale, the attributed network has the most optimal latency but least agency. Centralised networks are most suited for contingency and distributed networks for redundancy. Optimal agency, as opposed to best agency, is about fitness for purpose. There is always a trade-off between latency, contingency, redundancy and agency. This evolution toward optimal agency specific to a monad's unique purpose appears to be a constant across all monads, which adapt from optimal latency to optimal contingency to optimal redundancy and finally the full agency that their purpose demands. In network terms, this is the ability to continue operating no matter the fault conditions. Mm -hmm.